Up to this point, everything that we have considered was a very basic circuit that had essentially a single purpose. We considered two different types of amplifiers, inverting and non-inverting. We considered the inverting summer. We considered an integrator and a differentiator and a couple of flavors of each. We looked at the basic comparator and an extension of that, the comparator with hysteresis or the Schmidt trigger and so forth. Each of these can be considered a basic building block that can be put together in different ways in order to achieve some completely different purpose. So now we're going to look at how to use a couple of completely different building blocks that we've looked at to build a third completely different type of circuit. During this discussion, we are going to assume that all of the op amps are running on plus and minus 15 volt supplies. We're also going to assume that they have rail to rail outputs. Just to simplify the discussion, it's absolutely not necessary to make these circuits work. It's just a little bit easier to talk about. We're also going to assume that the op amps are ideal. In other words, the gain is infinite and the input bias current is zero and so forth. First, let's consider an integrator. Here is our basic integrator circuit. Now, I have relabeled the input and the output with what may seem to be somewhat mysterious subscripts. The input is called V sub S. The output is called V sub T. The reason for this change in subscripts will become apparent shortly. Recall for the basic integrator that V sub T, the output, is simply 1 over C times the integral of the current through that resistor, which is just V sub S divided by R, with respect to time, plus, of course, your constant of integration. If we assume that V sub S is simply a constant, then this reduces to V sub S T divided by RC plus your initial value of V sub T. So we'll come back to that in a few moments. But before we move on to our next basic building block, we're going to move the resistor and the input, and the reasons for this will become obvious shortly. We're going to take that resistor R and the input V sub S, and we are going to stack it above the capacitor. So there we have it, and we'll come back to this in just a few minutes. But let's get rid of that, and let's put up our next building block, which is a Schmidt trigger. Now, once again, I have relabeled the input and the output. The input here is called V sub T. The output is called V sub S. And we've got R sub I, the input resistor, and R sub F, the feedback resistor. And with those in place, then the which point for the hysteresis is V sub P times R sub I divided by R sub F. Now, although I encourage you to work out a detailed solution for what we're going to talk about momentarily with variables instead of fixed values, it's a lot easier to talk about in the context of this video if we actually have some numbers there rather than variables. The variables really make it difficult to discuss. So we're going to assume a couple of specific values for R sub I and R sub F. R sub I we're going to let be 20K, and we're going to let R sub F be 100K, and that makes that ratio, R sub I over R sub F, one-fifth. Since we're using op amps with rail-to-rail -rail outputs, the output will either be plus or minus 15 volts, and the equation for calculating the values for the input voltage, V sub T, where the comparator switches, is given by minus V sub S times R sub I over R sub F. But we've already seen that that ratio is 1 fifth. So we've got minus either plus or minus 15 times 1 fifth, which gives us 
plus or minus three volts as our two switch points. So when it's coming up from below, the output will go high at three volts. When it's going back down, the output will go low when it reaches minus three volts. Let's now add our integrator back in and we're simply going to connect the output of the integrator to the input of the Schmidt trigger and then we're going to wrap the output of the Schmidt trigger back to the input of the integrator. So now we've got an overall feedback loop in the entire circuit. But again, we've basically got two components. We've got an integrator and we've got a Schmidt trigger. In order to figure out what this circuit is doing, you sort of have to make an assumption about the state of the circuit, verify that that state is actually possible, and then work from there. So we're going to assume that V sub S, the output of the Schmidt trigger, is plus 15. We're also going to assume that V sub T, the input to the Schmidt trigger, or the output from the integrator, is at plus three. In other words, that would imply that possibly that input has just reached plus three and it's just switched positive, although it could have gone above three and come back down to plus three. Since V sub T is plus three volts, that means the voltage across the capacitor in the integrator is minus three volts. So now let's see what happens from this point. Remember that the inverting input of the integrator is at virtual ground, so the current through R, the overall feedback resistor, is simply V sub S, which we assume to be plus 15, divided by R. None of that goes into that input, and so it all has to go into the capacitor. Now remember, the capacitor is currently at minus 3 volts. But now you've got a positive current going into the positive voltage reference, so that voltage across the capacitor is going to start increasing, and not only that, it's going to increase at a constant rate, since R is always between V sub S, which is plus 15, and ground, so the voltage across R is always 15 volts, therefore I sub R is a constant. So the voltage across C is going to start ramping up from minus 3. Now that also means that the output of that integrator, the input to the Schmidt trigger, is going to start ramping down from plus 3 volts, heading down toward its lower switch point of minus 3. Now eventually it's going to reach minus 3 volts. When it reaches minus 3, BAM! The output of the Schmidt trigger goes negative to minus 15, and all of a sudden, whoa, the voltage across R, that overall feedback resistor, has just reversed. The current I sub R turns around and starts going the other way, same magnitude, just going in the opposite direction, which then starts discharging the capacitor C. So the voltage across the capacitor C reached plus 3 volts, but now it's pulling current out of it, and so it starts heading back down again at a constant rate. Now that of course means that V sub T, which is the inverse of V sub C, is going up. Eventually, the output of the integrator reaches 3 volts, and when that happens, the Schmidt trigger switches back to plus 15, and now we're back to where we originally started with our initial assumption, and the entire process repeats. So what you get out of this is you get a triangle wave at the output of the integrator, because it goes down at a constant rate, then it goes back up at the same constant rate just in the opposite direction, and at the same time that's going on, the output of the Schmidt trigger goes from high to low to high to low. And since the time for the discharge and recharge of the capacitor is equal, that square wave is going to have a 50% duty cycle. In other words, it spends exactly the same amount of time high as it does low. So now you have an oscillator that produces two different waveforms as its output, a square wave and a triangle wave. We haven't said anything yet about how fast 
this circuit oscillates. And that will come in the next video.